Hey guys, what's up? Good to see you. This is Conrad from GOG Boxing and we are going to talk about balance. Got a great question uh, was sent in to me. Uh, how do I ha get better balance uh, in boxing? And so I'm going to give you five aspects, uh, a, a few things to keep in mind re with regard to technique and then some things to practice, some actually drills. Some of these I've shown you before, but you will see they are key. Now, the first thing to keep in mind in, in when it comes to balance is I know that some of you say, oh, it has to do with you know your ears and all that. Okay, well, if you have issues there, you need to go to the doctor. But uh, what people tend to ignore are two aspects. Um, one is your neck, your head placement. Two are your ankles and your feet your ankles and your feet. But before we get into some exercises to help you with, with, these, with these two areas, we're gonna talk a tiny bit about technique. And the first does go to head placement. You can't have balance in boxing if you have your chin up, okay? So that's the first thing. You gotta keep your chin down. And I mean keep your chin down during your drills, during your workouts, when you're hitting on the heavy bag. I see tons of guys when they're sitting in front of their boxing coach, you got their head down, then they go over to the heavy bag, and they're hitting like this, all right, with their head up. Now I'm going to show you what happens. I'm going to show you some things that, that will, that the reason why that's happening. First of all, you got to practice with your chin down, your chin down to protect yourself. So if you throw a jab right, your chin, you know, you throw a jab, your chin's here, and so you're protected, right? But another issue is balance. So look at this. If I'm, if I'm, and I'm, I'm going to. I, I'm going to back up in a minute and show you some drills, but just right now, look at my head placement. If I'm here, and I'm, I'm going to keep this arm down for a second, and I'm in a, in a boxing uh, stance, you know, of course my other arm would be up, but right now it's, I'm keeping it down so you can see where my chin is, right? If I, have my, if I leave my chin up, as soon as that happens, not only am I more vulnerable because people can come over my shoulder and hit me right over, but look what happens. If I lean forward, there's my chin. What did that do? That led my chin over my knee, which we'll talk about in a second. If I lean to the side, there's my chin, and my whole body gets off balance. I lean to this side, there's my chin, my whole body's off balance. Now look at the same thing what happens. I'll do it like this. Look, if I lean to the side, my chin's over here, lean over here. I know you see you see guys like Floyd Mayweather, who's all you know, he's doing all kinds of stuff, but he's superhuman. Let's just think of like you're immortal right now. Okay? Look what happens if I'm in my stance, okay? Just at my upper body right now. If I'm here and I lean and I lean my chin, I try to lean out over my knee with my chin down. I immediately it just feels wrong. Now you could do it with your head out here, but the problem is you're not gonna be able to get back. You're super vulnerable, right? You really don't have any balance. You're tipping over. If you have your head, your chin down, and you slip, your whole body reacts and goes to the right place. You have your chin up and you slip. You're already, and what are you going to do from there, right? You have your chin down here, you're tipping over. If you keep your chin down, the same movements become, even if I don't have my hands up, the same movements become, I'm in balance, right? It feels weird with my hands down like that because I don't fight with my hands down. But you could, you could if, you, if you want to fight with your hands down, not, I'm not recommending it, don't do it with your chin up. If you have your chin down, you can move all over the place. You chin up, I mean, it doesn't even feel right, right? So the first thing to remember is your chin. And that includes everything you're doing. When you're doing jump rope, keep your chin down. When you're doing, uh, you know, you're doing box steps, box step drills, keep your chin down, okay? When you're doing pivots, look at this. If I'm here and I want to do a step pivot to this side and I have my chin up, I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place as soon as if I have that same step pivot and I have my chin down, I'll do it like in a in a Philly shell so you can see my chin. That same pivot with my chin down, right? Without usually I would put a guard up, but okay. Then I come here and I pivot out and my balance is there the whole time. Right? So I'm here, I pivot out, my balance is here the whole time. I went the other way, no problem with my balance. If my chin is up, I'm going to be everywhere. Okay, so that's the first thing, your chin, because your chin goes to your neck. Your neck, if your neck doesn't doesn't know what's going on, with, if your neck is all over the place, your body's all over the place. Okay. Now, second thing is, which relates to your chin again, 
no matter what you're doing, you don't want to get your head past your knee, over your knee and past your knee. How is that going to happen? That's usually going to happen because you've got your chin up, right? So let me back up a little bit so you see this now. You should be able to see my whole body. There's some guys working next door so you hear the cars, but oh well. Now, so look what happens. First of all, I'm going to turn sideways again. I'm just going to have my, my I'll, I'll do it like in, a, in kind of a Philly shell so you see. A lot of times, in fact, guys with the Philly shell, especially now that you're seeing the, the new generation, you're seeing the Teofimo Lopez's, the Shakur Stevenson's, and, and people are looking at Floyd, they're mistaking a Philly shell stance with baiting, because Floyd bait, baited a lot. He'd get out there and he'd dare people to hit him, right? And you do that, and one thing that you'll want to do is get your chin, you'll start going like this, sticking your head out. Well, then your chin's out. Your chin's out, you get over your knee. You get over your knee, you're in trouble, okay? If you do the same thing, you can bait, you can bait, but see, when my chin's down, when my chin's down and I'm baiting, and my chin's not up and I'm baiting, I didn't go over my knee. I didn't go past my knee, right? But I can still, and I can still move. I can be on the front foot, I can be on the back foot. It's the same thing here. If your chin is down, you're not going to go past your knee. If you go past your knee, look what happens. Look, here I am. If, I'm, if I put my chin past my knee and I try to pivot, see that's how awkward, I'm exaggerating just a tiny bit, but, but what happens is your chin is here, all your weight is on that front foot. How are you going to pivot like that, right? Your chin's here, no problem to pivot, okay? No problem to pivot either way because your chin's not in front getting past your knee. Your chin's down, it's not going to get past your knee. Okay? Same thing when you throw punches. You throw punches. When you're here, you throw a jab. Let's say even if you want to do a Golovkin type jab. Bam! Your knee's going forward. Your body's going forward. Your chin's down so it's not going past your knee. If you want to throw, if you want to throw a right, I'll stand a little bit like this so you can see. Maybe you can see better. If I want to throw a straight right, bam! I'm not going like that. Okay? So, you chin down. Don't put your head past your knee. It's going to do a lot for your balance. Okay? It's going to do a lot for your balance. Now, but let's talk about, and I got the feeling that one issue, uh, when, when I got these questions, was that some people just don't have very good balance in general. Okay? Um, sometimes I think that, again, comes from too much weightlifting and doing sports that you're, you're building up. Uh, kind of muscle, too much muscle here, less muscle there, some imbalances, and it contributes to just not having balance. But what are some things to do, some exercises that will help you fix your balance? Okay, here. Perfect exercise. I've already shown it to you a couple of times. This also comes from the Kenny Weldon School. Uh, apparently, if I remember right, actually, I think he said this during a camp. Um, was that this is one of the first things that he shows he would get guys to do to see if they had balance okay so what do you do you I'm gonna back up slightly so you can see you have a line you bring your toes together you've seen this in some of my warm-ups you always do this in your warm-ups okay put your hands on your hips get your chin down and you hop back and forth over that line with your feet together now you say that's easy then you go back. Now, really, you should do it the whole, like a, get maybe 10 yards or 10 meters, something like that. But so you go forward and then you'll go back, right? But you see, keeping your chin down, okay? Now, that's really just to get you warmed up, except keep your, put your toes more in like that. The next thing you do, and I've seen it on, I mean, I've shown it on the other videos, is you do the same thing, but you can do it on one leg, okay? You're gonna hop going forward and back with one leg, you're gonna hop going forward and back with the other leg. And I'm gonna tell you why. But it just looks like this, okay? Hopefully this thing doesn't, I'm gonna try to hold this so it doesn't fly off. But it just looks like this. Now, look, <laughs> it's kinda of funny I'm trying to talk. I'm going back, forward and back. Now, one thing that you do though, for both of these exercises, this is why I'm outside. You do it on outside on uneven ground, okay? Why do you do it on uneven ground, okay? Because it's gonna make your ankles and your feet stronger, especially your ankles, those tendons in your ankles. Lots of guys think about balance. They think about this, they think about their brain, where their arms, 
a lot of it has to do with your tendons, your feet, okay? Really has to do with your feet. You see like guys like tightrope walkers, and these guys, man, they got amazing balance because their feet and their ankles are so strong. And they're so in tune with each other. That is going to help you a ton. If you do these exercises, try to do it on this foot because this is the foot. Say I tore my Achilles in that foot two years ago, so I'm still coming back. But if you do this exercise on one foot, boing, 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 and you're going forward and back, and you go all the way like 10 meters, right? 10 meters forward and back. You do that as part of your warm up. I guarantee you, your overall balance and your quickness is going to improve because you are training. It's different than just jumping rope. You are training those ankles, especially if you're doing it on uneven ground and your feet to be strong and to help you because that whole movement, this whole movement, right? This whole movement here, everything has to connect or else you fall over, especially when you're like just out on the dirt, okay? so. Those two exercises right there are key. And there's a third one, and this is kind of a silly one, but you'll see it especially in Cuban boxing schools, but not only. Wrestlers do this. During the warm-ups, you'll see guys, what do they do? They run and they spin around. And then they'll run the other way and they'll spin around the other direction. Now, that looks really silly, but it does two things. One, you do it on uneven ground, you do it for the whole length, like 10 meters or so like this. I guess that's 10 meters. What's it doing? Your ankles are getting stronger. Your balance is getting stronger. The, the, the actual, you know, what we're talking about, the, the balance in your ears, you know, the, the fluid in your ears that goes to your brain, everything controls your balance. Everything is being connected. You do those three exercises. So two feet together to warm up and do this after you do your jump rope, right? Then you do one foot, one side, boing, boing, boing. And then you go back the other way, do the other foot. This is my bad foot with the Achilles, but I, I do do these with the Achilles because I'll, one day I'll do a, uh, I'll do an, a whole program on how to rehabilitate a torn Achilles because I know a lot of guys have it, okay? You do these and then you do the silly willy, let's run this way and let's run back. You do those and your balance is gonna improve. But none of it matters if you're not keeping your chin down, right? If you keep your chin up, you'll get over your knee. If you keep your chin down, you'll naturally be in the right, the right position. Now, I'm gonna show you one other thing, one other thing that has to do with some basic, uh, basic issues when it comes to your chin and balance. Okay, so I'm going to get a little closer for a second. Now, we're going to talk about that chin down. Or let's talk very quickly. I'm just going to re re go back over one thing with the chin down when it comes to slipping, okay? And then I'll back up in your seat. You'll see my whole body. A lot of guys now, and this comes also, you know, Teofimo Lopez, he's fighting as a southpaw. And these guys, that one, they're professionals. Two, they're like superhuman. They can do what they want, okay? You are probably not superhuman and you're not a pro, okay? Um, maybe you're gonna be a pro. But if you look at just very, some very basic responsible boxing, slipping, right? And that will, this will also keep in mind, what you'll help keep in mind what I'm talking about with your balance. Now, I like a high guard, okay? You don't have to have high guard. You can have just a more conventional guard. There's two things. One thing you can practice when you practice slipping. You can do this when you're doing it with your friend or with hand pads, or you can just do it uh, even you can pop the double-ended bag and slip on both sides of the double-ended bag, for example, or just do it shadow boxing, okay? When you slip, when you slip, if you turn and you get, you, if I do it in a high guard, I'll look through, like I'm looking through binoculars, but you turn and you get your chin down when you slip, one, I'm, I'm getting my hands out of the way, one, Look at look where my hand is. If I slip here, bam, it's it's cocked to shoot. If I if I'm here and I slip, if let's say I slip to this side, right, but my chin's still down, I slip the punch, I'm cocked to come back with a hook, or I could come back with a strong jab. Okay. If you slip with your chin out or your head sideways, because see look what happens when I'm slipping. I'm slipping and I'm getting my chin behind my shoulder, 
right? Dop, dop. If I'm slipping, I'll do it with my hands down. If I'm slipping with my head behind my shoulder, right? Even if I was just in like a, a loose Philly shell, from here, bam, I could do an uppercut. I can hit you with a straight right. I could, I can easily come under because there's my balance and come here because my balance is all there. If I'm doing this out here, and let's say I try to throw straight, what's gonna happen is when I throw it, just my natural body mechanics are gonna bring me too far over. And look what happens now. My chin's over my knee. Now if I wanna come back, I'm just starting to do this kind of swinging. There's nothing tight here. There's nothing tight here. So you can do, if you want to practice out of a high guard and just look through binoculars, that's a good way to get the feel in, right? But you don't have to. You can do it like this. See, just make sure you get your chin down. Get your chin down, right? Right? Get your chin and get, when you slip to the other side, get your chin behind the other shoulder, right? Um, at least practice that. It may be too exaggerated for some of you that are really uber athletic and you want to be the next Pernell Mill Whitaker and you're moving all over the place. Okay, but practice that. Just don't, don't with your head all over here like that because you're setting yourself up to get goomed big time and it's going to mess up your balance. Okay, now last thing I'm going to add in. All of these things I told you, don't put your head too far, oh, get your head past your knee. Don't have your chin up. Uh, the exercises I just gave you. There's one thing you can do which will help pull all this together which is really going to help you with your balance and that is shadow boxing. And again, I keep saying we're going to do this and I haven't done it yet, but to do kind of intelligent shadow boxing to think about what you're trying to do. But when I say shadow box, I don't mean doing it for just like a minute. Do, do shadow boxing for like 15 minutes straight. Now, if you want, you can break it into rounds, three rounds, and then three rounds, and three rounds with a minute break, okay? But if you do shadow boxing for like 15 minutes straight every day, so you do your warm up, I've given you lots of warm up exercises, your jump rope and all that. You do these things as part of your warm up. Then you do your shadow boxing. What's going to happen? is because if you're keeping in and i'm talking about i'm not talking about just going out there and throwing zillions of punches that's not shadow boxing but if you keep in mind the things you learn you know the box steps with your chin down right maybe you're doing some l steps with your chin down the combinations you know a one one two chin down you practice those and you go for 15 minutes and you start adding in other combinations maybe you get more advanced and you think like a you know a canela type thing uh, like a one uppercut lean in uppercut here, here here I mean there's you can you can start learning more combinations but if you practice these for 15 minutes and you just stick to your shadow boxing set a timer Make sure your chin's down. If you have to, you can put a tennis ball or something, a sock actually under, a ball up socked under your chin to keep it there, right? But that, that exercising for such a long period of time, 15 minute shadow boxing will help pull everything together. So when you're doing that, you're doing that, you can practice your pivots, right? You can practice your pivots. You can practice going backwards. You can practice the one, one, two, come under you can all these different things you can do but if you keep your head from going over your knee you keep your chin down right you practice your slips so it'd be like jab slip to this side jab slip to this side ta, ta, slip to this side come back right you you practice all these things these basic things some of these things which i've harped on in these videos 15 minutes straight as part of your warm-ups your balance is going to improve Okay, so I hope that helps. I give you a number of things to practice here. Dogs are barking again. Like, subscribe, come back. It's actually freezing outside. Uh, but Merry Christmas also and Happy New Year. And we will see you soon.